Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is Dr. Emmanuel. Um, this video is directed at PLAB2 candidates. So anyone who is preparing for the uh, for the for the PLAB2 examination, a uh, doctor who intends coming to the United Kingdom, this video is for you. We'll be going through a case which is on the GMC website, uh, and I will show you that topic very shortly. So let's look at the topic: head pain or headache. Some patients might describe headache as a head pain. And particularly when a patient uses the word head pain, you should begin to ask yourself, is this patient actually talking about a scalp pain, for instance, or a deep-seated pain? So this is um, extracted from the GMC website. And the scenario is as follows. It says, you are in a mock consultation with a patient uh, played by a role player who has been briefed about their condition. So the patient, Play the, the patient or the, you know, the actor has been briefed about their condition. You are a foundation year two doctor in general practice. You are told that your patient, James Horton, aged 45, has called to complain of pain in his head. You are not given any other information. You must assess and manage the patient over the telephone. You will be given eight minutes to complete this scenario. So this is a, this is, this is a kind of, you know, um, a, a, a kind of scenario you could have in your PLAB2 examination. And uh, this is a telephone consultation. You are expected to speak with James Horton, uh, who is age 45. And you've also been informed from this case that this patient is complaining of pain in their head. Okay, so you're already aware of what the presenting complaint is before you move into the consulting room. It says you must assess. Assessment typically involves history taking and physical examination. Well, because you are doing this over the phone, there wouldn't be a physical examination. Well, obviously, part of, we'll get to, we'll get to it, part of, uh, part of your assessment would entail you inviting this patient to come in if you think it's necessary for you to examine them. You also need to discuss management with this patient over the phone. And bear in mind, each case in your PLAB 2 examination is eight minutes. So eight minutes is so small. So you have to do a thorough job in eight minutes. Let's proceed. So what will be your approach? That's the question you should be asking yourself now before your exam and even on the day of your exam, when after reading your after reading the case, before you move in, you need to be brainstorming before the bell goes is to ask yourself, what is the approach? Is you have a basic approach, which will entail data gathering, diagnosis, um, you know, giving a diagnosis and then your management. So in terms of history taking, you have to explore the presenting complaints. So you're speaking with this patient over the phone, you're already informed that this patient uh, is complaining of headache. But a good way to start is to say, hello, this is doctor, you call your name, Dr. Mike, Dr. Emmanuel. You know, um, am I am I on to James Horton? Well, that's near. He said, oh, yes, doctor speaking. So okay, yes, how can I help you? So even though you know the presenting complaint, instead of saying, oh, I understand you've, had, you've got a headache today, you could just say, how can I help you? And you like, oh, doctor, yes, I've got a headache. Or you could say, okay, I understand you're having some head pain or headache. Is that, or is that right? And the patient confirms that. And you could say, could you tell me more about this? Or tell me about this? Or you could say, how can I help? Just throw it open. How can I help? And then the patient tells you, oh, doctor, yes, I've got this headache. And you're like, oh dear, could you tell me more about that? And then the patient tells you a little bit more. Um, and then obviously you need to get more history. You need to understand, you need to characterize the, the nature of the head pain or the headache, because there are so many things that could cause head pain. So you need to ask, you know, you need to establish the onsets, the severity, the character of the pain. Is it throbbing? Is it sharp? Is it shooting? You know, is it piercing? How does it feel? And then the timing. Timing means when does it happen? Okay, that's the temporality. You need to establish the temporality or uh, the chronology. So the chronology of the symptom or the temporality. What happened first? You know, like the time frame. When did it start? How has it progressed? You know, things that have happened in between. How often does this does the patient experience the headache or the head pain? Uh, that gives you an idea of what could be going on. Very important thing you need to establish uh, is the eyes. Okay, we'll get to that. Let's let's follow these slides. So you need to understand the temporality or chronology or time frame of your symptoms. 
you need to establish differential diagnosis or red flags. So obviously having differentials right from when the patient tells you about the headache and tells you about the pain, in your mind will begin to say, oh, this sounds like maybe giant cell arteritis or this sounds like cluster headache or this sounds like, you know, migraine or tension headache. You know, from the first few sentences the patient will tell you, you begin to have a clue, you begin to formulate your diagnosis. So you ask about red flags, we we'll talk about red flags towards the end. So very important, you must rule out red flags for headache. You know, things like any neurological deficits, any weakness in the arms or legs. Does the headache wake them at night? Does it wake them from sleep? If a headache is severe enough to wake a patient from sleep, it tells you that maybe something serious like a brain cancer or a brain tumor, you know, could be, could, could be responsible, a space occupying lesion. We'll, talk, we'll look at other red flags like vomiting, uh, blood vision, loss of vision, you know, um, jaw claudication. Because if a patient is having jaw claudication, you begin to think of giant cell arteries, which is an emergency because it can cause permanent loss of vision. So you need to establish the patient's eyes, ideas. What does the patient think? What does the patient think could be responsible for this headache? Or what? The, what you ask the patient. So James, what do you think? Um, is anything you think could be causing this? Or is anything you suspect could have brought this on? You also ask about their concerns. Is there anything you're particularly worried about? Is there anything that worries the patient? The patient might tell you, well, I'm so, I think I'm worried about a stroke. My mom had a stroke. I'm worried about a brain tumor. You know, I read, I read on the NHS that, you know, a brain tumor can cause a headache. And I'm just worried about that. What are the expectations? So you ask James, you say, James, is there anything you were particularly hoping I would do to help today? You might say, oh yes, I want to be investigated. I was hoping you can bring me in to examine me. We might tell you I want to have a, a, a scan of my head to make sure it's not a stroke or brain tumor. So you need to establish why James Horton has booked this appointment. What is he hoping to get by the end of this consultation? What is he hoping to gain out of this consultation? You need to establish the impact. What does James do? What is his work? How is his headache affecting you? So James, how is it affecting you? You know. How is this affecting you? And then he tells you, oh, well, it's affecting my job. I work on the computer. Each time I put on my, my desktop, you know, the screen, the light from the screen just uh, maybe makes my headache worse. You know, um, so you need to establish the psychological, the social impact, occupational impact, impact on relationship, impact on, on his life generally, and the impact on his mental health. Could the headache be making him feel worried, anxious, low mood? You need to summarize. Towards the end, you say, thank you, James, for everything you've told me. To summarize all you've said, you've had this headache for two weeks or for three months, which is, and it's been getting progressively it's been getting worse. You said it's throbbing. You're particularly worried that it could be a brain tumor, and you're hoping that we'll be getting a, we'll be getting a head scan today. Is that, you know, does that capture everything you've said? And he'd be like, oh, yes, doctor. Then, at that point, you should have formulated a diagnosis. Because I, 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 I presume this kind of exam, they'll want you to really have um, a, a working diagnosis from your data, from your history taken. Then if you're still not particularly sure, because headache is something that could potentially be serious, you have to then tell James, I think, uh, to complete things, to make sure that uh, we don't miss anything right, and to also aid me in making the right diagnosis, I would like you to coming for a physical examination. Is this something you think you'll be able to do? Now, this will help you establish whether or not the exam is tilted towards you bringing this patient in or not. By the time you ask the patient, is this something you'll be able to do? The patient tells you, no, I wouldn't be able to come in. You know, and then because I'm, 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 I'm away, I, I'm, on, I'm, away, I'm, I'm, I'm 200 miles away on holiday or something. Then depending on what you suspect, if you think, for instance, could be giant cell arteritis. The patient has told you the headache is, you know, superficial um, around the temple area. You know, it's worse when they are when they are brushing their hair. And they have jaw claudication. You need to really check if they've got visual symptoms, blood vision, or not. Um, so you, if you're thinking about something like that, if you think it's a migraine or a tension headache or medication overuse headache, then you can then decide to manage things over the phone and obviously do a safety net and agree to bring the patient back for follow-up. So let's proceed. So examination, because it's a telephone, if it's a face-to-face, -face, you need to examine the patient because it's a telephone consultation, you need to tell the patient that I would like to bring you in and then the examiner will particularly ask you, 
what do they want to examine? I want to examine the patient's vital signs observations. In the UK, they call it observations most times. So it's not vital signs. And in the US and Nigeria, you know, and some other countries call it vital signs. So you know, I would like to do the patient's observations, check their height, their blood pressure, their pulse, you know, temperature, um, examine their cranial nerves and the rest of their neurology, you know, power, sensation, and, and reflexes. You also want to do a fundoscopy to check for papillidema and things like that, which might give you a clue as to, you know, to towards um, raised intracranial pressure. So in terms of management, you have to give your diagnosis. You have to tell the patient from everything you've told me, I suspect you might, I'm thinking you likely have migraine. Is this something you've heard about? So you explain the diagnosis, you check the patient and is this something you're particularly, you know, is, is this something you're aware of? And what's your understanding of migraine? The patient tells you what they understand. And then uh, you need to check the understanding, check if they've got any questions, you need to address their eyes. It's so, okay, I, 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 from what you said, I know you're particularly worried about a brain tumor. From everything you've told me, it's unlikely. I don't think you have a brain tumor. It's unlikely that you have a brain tumor based on the symptoms that I you know from all the questions, answers you've given to all the questions I've asked you. I also um, understand that you were hoping we'll get a brain scan or a head scan at this point. And I, I don't think... Uh, that is the best thing for us to be doing at this point. Or if you think yes, it's, if you think it's, patient could potentially be having a raised intracranial pressure uh, or, or a space occupying lesion, you could say yes, I do agree with you. From everything you've said, I think we should be getting a scan of your head. So you could either agree or disagree, but of course in a nice way. You need to explain the treatment or need for investigation. So if you think you need to be referring this patient to a specialist, you need to explain that. If you think the patient needs a, uh, needs further investigation, some blood tests, full blood count, UNEs, LFTs, you know, probably checking their CRP, inflammatory markers, you need to explain that to them as well. Uh, you need to ask yourself, oh, headache, patient needs safety net, so you need to explain safety netting, and in terms of safety netting, you explain safety netting for things like, things like you know, general SOLs, so stroke, uh, brain tumor, so if the patient develops any weakness in the arms, any tingling, any abnormal sensations, um, you know, any, slur any slurring of their speech, any problems at all that they're worried about, they need to let you know immediately. Um, obviously, weight loss in your history, they've asked about things like weight loss, you know, depending on, really depending on where the history, the information the patient is giving you takes you. For headache, I'll particularly want to, you know, arrange a follow-up for this patient. If I think it's a tension kind of headache, then I'll tell the patient to take some simple paracetamol, you know, rest, um, you know, um, and things like that. Could be some lifestyle changes, exercises, avoiding cut down alcohol, avoiding smoking, smoking cessation, and all those kind of lifestyle adjustments. Uh, and then you could leave it with the patient. You say, okay, if things don't get better, Within the next, you know, within the next two to four weeks, if you think this headache is not settling, if it's getting worse, kindly come back to us. So you want to give a follow up. You can give it, leave it as an open follow up for the patient to book. But if you think it's something high risk, um, you know, you might need to arrange a follow up in two weeks or yeah, it's typically two weeks time. Let's look at common differential diagnosis for headache. You look at things like tension headache, uh, migraine, cluster headache medication overuse headaches so you have to find out what medication especially when you come in a headache and then you say okay what medications have you tried anything but yeah i take paracetamol how much paracetamol how much is the patient taking you know how often is the patient taking the paracetamol any other medications like ibuprofen any medications like codeine like you know over-the-counter codeine so you need to establish if even amitriptyline you need to try the gabapentin these medications can cause medication overuse headache you need to establish what medications the patient is taking and how much and for how long have they been on those medications another differential diagnosis is trigeminal neuralgia which typically the patient will describe the pain as a shocking kind of pain an electric shock like kind of pain and over the trigeminal nerve distribution either the ophthalmic or the maxillary or mandibular you know distribution of the trigeminal nerve and typically the patient will tell you that the pain is triggered um, by maybe you know, trigeminal neuralgia, any the slightest touch triggers that electric shock. And when even when they're brushing their hair, any touch, you know, even when they're chewing, trigeminal neuralgia can also be triggered by, of course, jaw movement, the mandibular and maxillary branches of the trigeminal nerve. If you suspect giant cell arthritis, otherwise called temporal arthritis, which is an emergency, 
then ideally the patient should be referred to the rheumatology uh, team on call for 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 review on the same day so urgent review to be seen uh, ideally on the same day uh, well, obviously because of the paucity of resources because not every patient can be seen immediately the teaching or the advice is all patients should be started on oral prednisolone the patient has ischemic symptoms you start them on 60 milligram once a day and if the patient doesn't have ischemic symptoms which means no no visual symptoms no jaw claudication you start them on oral prednisolone 40 milligram once a day if the patient has ischemic symptoms, then you should be speaking with the rheumatology on call. The patient should be seen on the same day, ideally. If the patient hasn't got ischemic symptoms, then the patient obviously can be seen within a time frame of, time frame of 72 hours. If the patient has blood vision or loss of vision, then the patient should be seen as a matter of emergency by the ophthalmology team on call on the same day. What the, what the rheumatology um, team would do, typically they will be car carrying out um, ultrasound of the superficial temporal artery so they'll do an ultrasound scan of the superficial temporal artery to assess the you know the, the blood blood flow um and obviously the thickness you know um, of the artery uh, they will also be arranging a biopsy so they'll do um, an ultrasound guided biopsy of the superficial temporal artery to come make a confirmatory diagnosis um and obviously if the diagnosis of uh, gca is ruled out then obviously the steroid uh, prednisolone will have to be stopped the patient because the patient most times would have been on steroid for less than a week uh, most times to be safe to stop the patient's uh, prednisolone abruptly if they think it's not if they think it's gca then obviously the patient to be on the up on the prednisolone for many months before uh, before the steroid is completely stopped Brain tumor is, you can see I've put that in red. So brain tumor is a serious um, cause of, of headache or head pain. So if you think a patient could potentially have a brain tumor, um, you know, neurological deficits, uh, vomiting, especially projectile vomiting, um, you know, anything that might tell his patient might have uh, a raised ICP. Or the examiner volunteers that um, papil the fundoscopy shows papilledema, or they give you a slide, they will give you a photo. Or when you say you like to do the fundoscopy, they might hand you a photo. And if you see, if you see a pale engorged, you know, optic disc, and you see, yeah, this thing, the, um, the fundoscopy shows the presence of papilledema, which I, which I, I think, um, patient has erased intracranial pressure. I like to refer the patient, you know, immediately to the medical team on call at the hospital for further assessment where the patient will obviously be having a CT head and, and maybe an MRI subsequently. Because we've recently been out of a pandemic in the last few, uh, few years, uh, during, in, the, in, the, in the lockdown, in the heat of the pandemic, there was a lot of discussion on cerebral venous sinus thrombosis as a cause of headache. So don't be... Uh, it, it's, it's not going to be unusual, uncommon for you to have a case where the diagnosis could be cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, CVST. So the, typically the patients will complain of frontal headache because if you look at the sagittal and parasagittal, the sagittal and sagittal sinus and parasagittal sinus, so, you know, they drain from the frontal part of the brain, you know, towards the occipital part and then they go into the jugular veins and all of that. So you need to, the headache, because if you have a blockage of a vein, the pressure is built from the proximal part. So in cerebral venous thrombocytes and sinus thrombosis, typically the headache is frontal. The headache will be worse when they lean forward because of the effect of gravity, you know, causing, causing further venous engorgement. So typically the headache could be around the forehead and around the eyes and when, when, they, when, they, when they lean forward, you know, um, and they may have neurological neuro, neurological deficits as well. Uh, so you need to you need to you need to have an open mind essentially when you're seeing a patient. Don't go into the exam, the club exam, having the belief that this is likely the diagnosis. No, go in with an open mind um, and have an interaction with that patient. Red flags when we we'll talk about headache. So new onset severe headache. So if for instance you're seeing a patient who is 50. A patient about 40 years and the patient is complaining of new onset severe if any patient new onset severe headache especially an elderly patient middle aged elderly they've never suffered with migraines they've never really had been the headachey kind of patients or people and all of a sudden they're having this new onset within the last two weeks they're having this 
really bad headache. You need to see it as a red flag. In the headache wakes the patient from sleep, severe enough to wake you from sleep, it's likely something uh, like a space occupying lesion, projectile vomiting, or even any form of vomiting. The patient tells you they vomit, whether projectile or non projectile, because projectile versus non projectile is a subjective assessment, isn't it? So the patient is vomiting, the patient comes of blurring vision, blurring of vision, or loss of vision, any other neurological deficits, neck stiffness, meningitis, jaw claudication, you know, GCA, dizziness could be. You know, something to do with stroke, for instance, cerebellar stroke. So you need to have an open mind um, to, to these PLAV2 examinations. So if a patient comes with headache uh, after going through this video, it's my hope or my belief that you should do justice to such a case. But always bear in mind that you have only eight minutes. So eight minutes is so short. So as soon as you hit the nail on the head from your, from your data gathering, launch into your diagnosis and let's look at that case again they said you are in a mock consultation they said you are in general practice those are something you also need to bear in mind you're a foundation year two doctor in general practice so you're not in any so if you watch some of my previous videos i'll leave a link in uh, at the end of this video if you watch some of my previous videos on your on plug two approach you find out that you need to pay attention to where you are because for most international doctors who will be doing the PLAP2 examination, you very likely wouldn't have understood the structure of the NHS, how the NHS is structured, you know, primary care, uh, GP settings, and they have the secondary care hospital settings, you know, so there are things that can happen in, in, in GP or in primary care, and there are things that have to be done in secondary care. So if a patient is in primary care, so you're seeing James Horton in primary care, what in general practice, what it means is you can you need to, you might need to consider referring. Okay, you don't have access to doing an urgent CT scan or urgent MRI scan. You don't even have access to urgent blood tests. The best you can do is collect blood samples and send the blood samples to the hospital lab, and then the result comes back to you the same day after a, after a few hours. It doesn't come back to you immediately. So if you think the patient needs urgent bloods and uh, you think this patient really needs to be seen by the medical team in A and E on the medical ward, then you need to be having a discussion with the patient and sending the patient right into hospital. If, it's, if you suspect it's migraine, obviously then you need to be uh, thinking about, you know, um, lifestyle adjustments as well, alcohol, um, cut down, smoking cessation, managing stress, um, and then medications like tryptan, somatryptan. So the patient could try somatryptan. We have to check, make sure they haven't got any allergies to somatryptan. And then you can try somatryptan, but you must have to explain again it's possible side effects of somatryptan, one of which, a very important one of which is serotonin syndrome. So if you're prescribing somatryptan, you need to tell the patient how to take it. Not more than 100 milligrams. So the patient can take 50 milligram, you know, um, and then within within not more not not earlier than two hours after the first dose the patient thinks you know the initial dose helps you can take another 50 milligram if they still got the headache at that point um and you need to stress the importance of not taking it earlier than two hours in interval in, you know because of the risk of serotonin syndrome i need to tell the patient if you develop serotonin syndrome which Typically, will cause checking, excessive sweating, feeling agitated. You need to let us. You need to let us know right away, immediately. Okay, if you if you're not able to get through to us, you know you need to be ringing one one one. If it's out of us, if we are closed, you need to ring one one. So in this plan two exam, the examiners will be very much impressed if you demonstrate an understanding of the structure of the NHS system. So it's not just knowing the medical parts. If you can demonstrate, I'll make a video where I'll explain the structure of the NHS system for people who are preparing for this PLAB exam. So remind me, I'm going to make a video. You can leave a comment to remind me, I'm going to make a video because if you demonstrate to the examiners that you understand how the UK healthcare system is structured, especially when you're discussing management and referrals with your patients, I believe that will go a very long way in giving you extra extra points or extra scores which will increase your chances of passing the exam overall which is the most important thing so we've come to the end of these um of this session um i hope it was useful i hope you liked it i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something from it if you think it's been helpful if you haven't subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe because i'll make more videos uh, on plab 2 and other relevant topics and kindly leave a like 
And if there's anything you think, any any other topic you think uh, you want me to, to touch on, kindly leave it in the comment box. Thank you for your audience and your attention.